I can't believe on the channel today we're going to be driving Britain's first supercar. But this feels like the perfect time to ask the question, should you really use a classic car with children? Let's find out. My name's Ben and welcome to Dad Cars. There's an Aston Martin V8 on my driveway. This is crazy. <laughs> right, look, let's kick things off by checking out rear practicality. All right, sweetie, shall we get in the back of a classic Aston Martin for the first time ever? Wow. Oh, look at this. This is so exciting. What do you think? <gasps> yeah. Do you like it? There's so much more space in the back here than there is in the DB9 generation Astons like mine. These seats are so much bigger and hang on. Yeah, look, it's only if I lean back <coughs> that my head kind of just catches there. But let's check out the leg space. Yeah, honestly as well, I mean, you've got to sort of spread your legs out, but this is <laughs> actually pretty decent. This is good, isn't it? And look, proper seat belts here as well. So we should be able to get some nice modern child seats back here, I reckon. Now, it might be a bit of a push to get you in, sweetie, in a rear-facing baby seat, but I reckon we could maybe get something in to safely take your sisters out. Yeah? What do you think? Oh, what's that? Oh, look at this little armrest, look. Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? Is there anyone who's watching this who's got memories of them when they were younger yeah. sitting in the back of a classic Aston Martin? Yeah. I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Now, the other unique thing about these Aston Martins is that there's not really a transmission tunnel here. And I know, speaking to Multimac, that they have actually fitted in the past a free across child seat in the back of an Aston Martin V8. How cool is that? Oh, look, and your rear passengers here, they've got access to oh. these, look. Little, what I call, sweetie bins. Right, so just out of interest, <laughs> could you get a rear phaser baby seat in here? So having adjusted the passenger seat here at the front, moved it forward to a position where you could still technically fit in it, but it's a bit uncomfortable for me. It, <laughs> it does actually work. So in theory, you would be able to put a bounce secure rear facing baby seat in the back of your Aston Martin V8. Now I was able to get one of my trusty five point harness, belt secure travel child seats that I use in the back of the Dab V9 in the back of here really well. I mean, I put this in here just to protect the lever. So the rear seats are bigger than the modern Astons, but what about the boot? <laughs> well, yes, look, I'd say that this is actually slightly bigger than the current generation Aston Martins, complete with buggy. And look, there's space there for a picnic basket. Now, starting up an Aston Martin V8, or to be honest, probably any classic car of this vintage, it's not a simple process. <laughs> so look, we do you put the key in and then you turn it to clicks and then you got to wait for it to start doing its thing. A couple of pumps on the accelerator pedal and then let's give it a try. So Britain's first supercar is the Aston Martin V8. It's got four seats and it's on the Dad Cars channel. How amazing is this? Now you might have noticed that I've got the windows open. I don't normally do that when I do the reviews. I hope the audio is okay. But the reason I've got the windows open is because although these came with air conditioning from standard, it doesn't work in this particular car that I'm driving. So on a day, hot day like today, if I had the windows up, honestly, I would be roasting. And so would also my little sweetheart in the back. <laughs> so what does it feel like being behind the wheel on my very first classic Aston Martin? Honestly, I wish I could articulate how incredible this feels. I just, I'm not going to be able to put it into words. It just, honestly, to me as an Aston Martin diehard fan, this is such a special moment for me. And it doesn't disappoint whatsoever. Everything in here, you just want to touch and feel. And oh, the walnut panels, the hand-stitched leather. I mean, these Aston Martins, like pre-DB7, and talk about hand-built Aston Martins. These really were hand-built. So no, no two cars are really the same. And it just feels so special. And the steering wheel feels really tiny and delicate, but 
you've got to grab it by the scruff of its neck with this car because it does have power steering apparently you can kind of feel the rudimentary power steering helping you at low speeds but yeah look honestly it's just a car from a completely different world this so this car is 1985 however the v8 really it's kind of like a facelift dbs which came out in the late 60s i mean the dbs was available for like three years at the same time as the db6 so really this is a car that's more from the 60s than from the 80s so if you go into it with that in mind i mean that is more how this car sort of like feels to drive and operate it does feel like a car that's much older than the 80s so the dad cars channel started only nine months ago with my aston martin dad b9 we then did the Rapide S and then the incredible, monstrous DBS Superleggera and now we're driving the original supercar, the Aston Martin V8. And it is my goal with the Dad Car Channel to feature and drive every Aston Martin with four seats with at least one of my children on board. Now I know that's an ambitious goal but my aim with these Astons is to share with the world what I believe is the most important aspect of owning special cars like this sharing them with the next generation sharing them with your families and making memories so that is my hope with eventually featuring every aston with rear seats but you can help me out with that if you know anybody who's got classic astons you know share this video with them and look we never know there might be some people who watch this video and they reach out to me send me an email or a message on instagram and then see if we can get it on the channel and show the world look Let's share these cars with the next generation. Let's get the next generation excited about these classic Astons as well. So I have driven some incredible cars on the Dadcast channel over the last nine months, but let me tell you, nothing has gained the level of attention and respect and smiles and thumbs up and conversations as this Aston Martin V8. Everybody loves this car at petrol stations, my neighbours, <laughs> cars driving past, people on the street. Honestly, everybody loves this car, it makes them smile. I think classic Astons might be the most loved cars on UK roads. Now, if you've ever looked in the classifieds at these Aston Martins, you've probably been quite confused at the price range because you can see cars that are as high as £375,000, but then you also see cars as low as like 65. Now I'm no expert on these cars, but it seems like the most desirable and most valuable ones are the manual X-Pack cars. And the much more affordable cars are the automatic ones. And also with classic cars, there's a spectrum of restoration level as well, isn't there? You can have a car which has literally just gone through a nut and bolt engine rebuild full strip down body restoration car that is worth top money but then on the opposite end you could have a car which has sat in someone's garage for the last 15 years which when you look at it it looks fantastic and it's at a really tantalizing price but it probably needs copious amounts spent on it restoration work to get it to a car where you could actually drive it enjoy it safely and speaking of money, even if you have a lovely car like this, running it is not gonna be cheap. Miles per gallon is atrocious. Absolutely terrible. I mean, I think what, like 11, 12 miles per gallon, that's probably what you're gonna be looking at. Just general running and maintenance costs of a classic car like this is gonna be high. You're gonna have to find yourself a really good specialist who knows exactly what they're doing and just keep on top of everything. Keep everything ticking over sweet. But on the bright side, this car I'm driving today in only a few years time will be 40 years old. So you won't have to pay for tax anymore. So now look, let me try and answer this question. Should you use a classic car with children? Is it safe to do so? Now, the first thing I want to say about this is I would never hop into a classic car, strap my children in and go for a drive without doing some fundamental checks first. What are the tyres like? What are the brakes like? 
speak to the owner. When was the last time it had a thorough safety inspection? Because you need to make sure that, you know, just fundamentally, is it a safe car to drive first? But then even if you do have a concourse, perfect example of a classic car, there is still a legitimate basic physics concern. So for example, let's take this car. Back in the 80s, the average car on the road weighed a lot less than it does today. One of the most common cars you'd see on the road in the 80s would have been a Mark III Ford Escort. And a Mark III Ford Escort weighed under one tonne. I mean, today, one of the biggest selling cars on UK roads is a Tesla Model Y, which weighs over two and a half tonnes. And just look at that, a Tesla just drove past as I said it. So look, nearly three times as much, you know, other cars on the road weigh a hell of a lot more. So there's just a basic physics concern for any occupant in a classic car. So if you were to ask me, Ben, would you buy a classic Mini Cooper and drive it 10,000 miles a year with your children on board? I would say absolutely not. I wouldn't feel happy doing that. However, what I would feel happy doing, clearly, as you can see, because I'm doing it right now, is on special occasions, when the weather is perfect, driving on roads that you know, a well-maintained classic car with a modern child seat fitted, that's being used on special occasions to go and make memories. Going for a picnic, going for ice cream, or once a year, going on a slightly longer trip down to go and see some relatives or something like that. If it's the exception, and not the rule, I personally feel that it is an acceptable thing to do. I think that the memories that you're gonna make with your family are worth it. And let's face it, any time you go in a car, it's a risk. But on the other hand, if you watching this were to say to me, Ben, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable driving a classic car with children on board, then that's absolutely fine as well. You'll do it, that's the right thing for you to do with your family. If you've made that assessment, that is correct as well. But I would just hope that people who take that standpoint for them and their family, you know, don't judge others harshly who are super passionate about cars and do all of the relevant checks and, you know, feel like it is something that, that, that they feel safe to do. And I just personally feel as well that these cars are such an important, special part of our history that if we don't share them with the next generation, who's going to love them? Because I do think that a lot of the people who buy these cars now, you know, maybe when they were a child, they were in the back of one. And so they grew up and then they wanted to, to buy one. But if the next generation don't get to experience those magical memories, you know, is the passion gonna be there to want to preserve these cars? I, look, I don't know, I hope so. I really hope so. Right, look, we're coming up some traffic lights now. Okay, we're at a traffic light. Now this seems like a perfect time to talk to you about the performance of this particular car. Right, this is foot to the floor. And my three-year-old is fast asleep in the back. So by my measure, this is not a fast car. This particular model that I'm driving. Now, my theory is it's because it's got this free speed automatic and i think that is kind of holding back and sort of choking the performance of this car because i believe the manuals are much faster and the final manual x-pack cars that they did they're supposed to be very fast but yeah look this automatic to me is not a fast car however i promise you i'm not just saying this i genuinely don't care I reckon you still get 90% of the experience with this free speed automatic as you would get out of a manual. It still sounds glorious. It looks absolutely stunning, obviously. And just the whole experience of driving it is still just as special. And look, you know, I'm driving at speeds which are gonna be very safe to have children on board. So look, I think this car is perfect for the Dad Cars channel. This entire review so far, my three-year-old has been fast asleep in the back. <laughs> right, I want all of my children to experience this car. So let's swap around, get some different child seats in. Right girls, so you comfortable? Mm -hmm. So we've readjusted this seat, haven't we? So that they're up there. And you are in the booster seat, high back booster seat. Are you ready to go for a drive? Mm -hmm. Do you know this is the oldest car that you've ever been in? Yeah, and what? 
Well, I don't think it's the fastest. It's definitely not the fastest. But what sort of car is this? Aston Martin. Yes. And this Aston Martin is older than your daddy. This, honestly, girls, I promise you, this is such a special car. This really is a special car. You know, there's lots of grown-ups that are like my age who would love nothing more than to go out for a drive in this car. And we are so lucky that we get to just go and enjoy it as a family. Yeah? So we go make some memories? Yeah. Should we get the windows down? <laughs> it sounds good, but it smells yucky. <laughs> I think that is a very valid point, actually. That's the thing of cars, cars back in the day, years ago, when daddy was a little boy, this is what cars smelt like. Yeah. Right, do not drop these sweeties, okay? I promise. Yeah. Because look at this lovely, look, sheepskin rugs that guy has got in his car. Now, I don't think those sheepskin rugs are standard, but they fit with it really well. We just had the parcel delivery man talking about how cool this car is, didn't we? Everybody loves this car, don't they? Now, speaking of the owner of this car, I need to say a massive thank you to Guy. Thank you so much for letting us borrow this for a long weekend. I really appreciate it. The crazy thing is, right, listen to this. I've never met Guy, the owner of this car. I've never met him, never even spoken to him on the phone. He's a friend of JM's. JM was reviewing this car and because James knows that, you know, my quest to review every four seat Aston Martin, James asked Guy, would dad cars be able to feature it as well? And look, <laughs> Guy is such a legend that he said, yeah, sure, he could borrow it. So thank you so much, Guy. Guy is the person who owns this car and he let us, he let us borrow it. <laughs> what, Guy? A guy called Guy? Yeah. You've never heard that name before, have you? Oh, bless you. That's tickled you, that, hasn't it? <laughs> Do you know, he's got two daughters. Oh. You all right? Nice, yeah? <laughs> See, look, everybody loves this car. Yeah. Do, you know what? Do you know what he drove when his um, daughters were like your age? Yeah. He had a Lotus. Lotus? Yeah, he had a Lotus Evora, nearly new Lotus Evora, and that's what he used as his dad car. I mean, you had one of them. Well, no, I've never had an Evora. I used to have an Elise, didn't I? But guys had so many cool, exciting cards, and I highly recommend you check out the interview that JM did with Guy. Um, I will link to that in the description below. What's made you laugh? What his name's, that his name's Guy. The amount of people that I've personally spoken to who have reached the pinnacle of owning some of the fastest supercars out there, and then I ask them, you know, where do you go after this? They say to me, well, I kind of want to buy myself a Aston Martin V8. <laughs> buy a classic supercar. When I first started driving this car, it felt massive, particularly for a classic car. You know, I was really taken back by just how big it is. And I mean, when you start driving it, it has got a huge muscle car bulge on the bonnet there. But you very quickly kind of learn that, you know what, it's, I think it's 1.8 something meters wide. So yeah, by modern standards, it's not a big car. But back in the day, this must have been massive. <laughs> yes, you can have a sweet, do not drop them. Do you want to hear the horn, girls? Listen. Oh. <laughs> What do you reckon to that? Does that sound funny? It's got two different horns, but this is the squeaky one. Listen. <laughs> what do you reckon? Is that cool? What's the next one? Let's have a look. See if I can do it. Oh, it's a normal one. <laughs> do you, which one do you prefer, the normal or squeaky? You like the squeaky one. I like the squeaky one. It is a bit, isn't it? Right, let's feel it going up here. You gotta stop for me, because someone's coming. You should have given way, buddy. Look, the thing with this car is, it's not quick getting up to speed, but once it's moving at speed, so, I mean, I, I drove like 150 miles to bring it back home, and a lot of that was, you know, on motorways. 
and it's a really capable GT cruiser, it really is, you know. Right, this is how fast it is, girls, you ready? Is that fast? My Aston Martin is faster, isn't it? Yeah, honestly, the DB9 feels like a spaceship compared to this, but this is magical, girls, honestly, this. This is basically a time machine. Yeah, this is this is a real life, this is a real life time machine, girls, because this is exactly as the car would have been, you know, nearly 40 years ago. So you get in here, the smell, the sounds, the feel, the taste even, everything all of your senses this is a time machine that's what's so magical about classic cars girls because of the poor fuel consumption and probably even more so with this free speed automatic i think piloting these cars is all about maintaining speed once you're sort of moving at pace it's wonderful, corners really well, actually drives incredibly well when you're moving at pace. You just do not want to press that brake unnecessarily. To be fair, the brakes do work really well, but I mean, you just want to flow. Everything in this car, you want to flow, because when you're flowing, it's really lovely to corner. The Aston Martin V8 obviously has a 5.3 litre V8, which produces apparently over 300 horsepower. Um, I know it was less for the US market because of emission regulations and stuff like that. And I believe these weigh around 1800 kilograms. I think that's the curb weight maybe. So, I mean, this could be potentially in the real world actually heavier than my DB9. This, I think, is one of Daddy's favourite moments that he can think of in recent memory. Right now, driving with you two, the sun shining, driving in this, the original British supercar, the Aston Martin V8. And I'm with you two, Pickles. Thank you so much for coming along with me. Do you, do you think you'll remember this forever? Yeah. yeah? So look, in summary then, for the Aston Martin V8, if you haven't guessed, this car is absolutely everything to me. Just the experience of this car. Honestly, it means the world to me. I'll treasure this weekend for the rest of my life. But look, I've got one last thing I want to leave you with. Okay, to anybody out there who would like to own an Aston Martin V8, or to be honest, any classic car, what I can imagine you've done is you've started looking at these cars and you've seen the ones which are sort of, you know, around £80,000 and you think, wow, I could, I could afford to buy that. I could afford to buy it and afford to run it. But then you start researching and finding out that, oh, actually you need a manual because they're faster and, oh, you know, cars from this certain year are better because of X, Y and Z. And then next thing you know, you're looking at cars which are out of your price range and so then you think, oh, well, look, I've got to save up and, you know, maybe one day. But what's going to happen is it will never come. One day will never come and you're missing out on actually just owning and experiencing a car like this. You know, if you could comfortably afford to buy, even if it's a, a free speed auto like this, this is 90% the experience that you'll get from having a manual. Everything is here. It's just, yeah, what? It's not gonna be quite as quick and slightly less engaging, but there's still plenty to keep you occupied in this and the core experience remains true. Don't let these years pass you by. What are you waiting for? Seize the moment and make some memories with your family in your incredible Aston Martin V8. Look guys, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you stick around, subscribe to the channel, share this video, comment below, and I'll see you on the next one. See you later, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Aston Martins classics. But handily, JM on Cars has just done a road test on this very car and he has driven and road tested other classic Aston Martins. So check out that video now. And look, I appreciate it so much. If you're watching right to the end, make sure you hit the bell icon because if you're still watching, you are the people that I want to be watching my videos every week. So I really appreciate it, guys. Look, I'm going back to living the absolute dream driving this car. This is incredible for me. And I'll see you soon.